like a man. Lord, that lamb just moved on that stand. I got movement in the cellars. I got footsteps in the hall. There's no time to waste. I better make some calls. I gotta get ready and make everything right. Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight. Hey, round up the team. Let's get started. Hey, this is brother mine. There's a party and you're invited We got the camera set Let's turn off these lights Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight Has a long history, it should be real, real good for activity. And we got the house wired for sound and got motion alarm setting all around. Got a box full of batteries ready to go, and everyone's itching to start this show. Got our logo cheese driving black SUVs, and that one bald guy with a slick goatee. <laughs> Friends are goes hunting tonight. Hey, round up the team. Let's get started. Hey, this is your big brother, Michael. There's our party and yo invited. We got the camera set. Let's turn on these lights. Cause all my rider friends are goes hunting tonight. That's right. Go get them, boys! Hi, everybody, and welcome to Pima TV. Welcome to Friday, January 27th, 2012. This month is pretty much done yeah, with. Yeah, it's flying by. It's, uh, the more mature I become, the faster they seem to move. Well, I don't know about mature, but yeah. Okay. Well, guys, have some really, really good news network-wise. Um, got some confirmation on some things today. Uh, and some confirmation the other day. And some confirmations the other day. Uh, coming very, very soon on Wednesday nights is the tentative date. Um, uh, on the alternate weeks that we're not showing Tri-State Paranormal. Uh, Shadow Chasers, excuse me. I almost let the cat out of the bag. On Wednesdays when Tri-State Shadow Chasers is on, um, the alternate Wednesdays, we will now be having uh, Gary Manley and the guys from Nightfall Paranormal in Massachusetts will be on uh, broadcasting their stuff with us. So be sure to tune in on Wednesdays, and then on Wednesdays we'll always still have the serial killer stuff too. But the thing I'm most excited about, because I have a little bit of it my well, that way, yeah. myself. Way to go, Hammer Thor. Yeah, way to go, Hammer Thor. Um, 
did get confirmation tonight PEN will be broadcasting or recording or both from the Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival in Nashville. It is on April 6th, 7th, and 8th. The Nashville Convention Center downtown. Should be an absolute blast. It's uh, being put on by Ben and Stacey Dixon. Uh, be sure and check the website. If you Everybody to look on the website right now, right above the player in the chat room. It's a little button that says Festivals. Um, as soon as I get some artwork and stuff from Ben and Stacy, we will be having them listed there, and you can check it out and find out all the information about it there. And we were also asked to join pros yep. at the Hales Bar in Southern Tennessee in October for Ghost Hunts for Hunger. Yep. It's an all-weekend event to help so we'll f fill, fill the pantry of the Chattanooga Food Pantry. Yep. And we always talk about how important it is to give back in the paranormal community. Well, guys, I mean, it's been a really good week. For the most part. For the most part. But we do have some. We do have Hold some on. news. Mia, we're gonna get this after I play this about who we got coming. Okay, play that first. Okay, just so you guys know, we got a special guest tonight, and here's a little something he put together. We we kind of like the guy. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't tell from the video our special guest tonight is mr chris maggard of tri-state paranormal of northern Kentucky. that's why i almost screwed it up a minute ago i almost did it you almost did but i was like wait a minute i didn't know i was doing that yet <laughs> <laughs> but we, we want to start the sh show off um we're, we're dedicating it to yeah a handful of our paranormal friends family peoples um it's been a rough week for the paranormal. Um, you you want to start, Chris? Yeah, um, uh, a really huge loss uh, to the community. A wonderful woman, um, wonderful mother. Uh, we lost Dawn Shy. Um, she's done a lot for a lot of people. Um, again, a great loss. Um, she lost her battle to cancer, and we didn't know. And then we just found out that last night. Uh, we lost Carl Lawson from Bobby Mackey's. Uh, so, you know, everybody, please, uh, if you could take a moment and uh, say a prayer to the families. Um, two great people. Two great people we lost. Definitely. And on the same lines, but not the same lines, we, we also have a couple of our friends in the hospital. Aaron Houdini is in the hospital. Um had a bleeding ulcer, and from what I understand, they think there's some kind of bacteria, but he was having an internal bleeding, and they're trying to get that to stop. And mm -hmm. Sid Schultz is in ICU. He had neck surgery and needed more, but they're not sure his heart will take it, so send prayers out to both of them, too, please. Amen on that one. And I have, <coughs> I have to throw this in after what I went through last year. That's any time you're in ICU, it's, it's pretty serious. When you finally realize what's going on around you, when the happy stuff wears off, it's scary. So thoughts and prayers to everybody. And, and my little footnote, a lot of people in the paranormal community like to argue with each other. Just, uh -huh. just re not everybody. There are some of us that actually get along. Yeah, no, I agree. But just remember, you know, everybody has a family. This yeah. this list of people Chris and I just went through. They're still people. They're they're still friends. They're still family. They still have loved ones. Absolutely, hundred percent. There's no point in the arguing. They may not be here tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. We never know when we're gonna go. 
So Never with that, I'm gonna be the next EVP. Right. Oh, I'm haunting some people. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. There's a whole generation of us that when we go, oh, Lord, they better look the hell out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's game of time. They, you they, got it, baby. They think there's a lot of teams out there now? Well, guess what? <laughs> they think they're getting cussed out now? <laughs> Just wait. Giggity goo. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly goo? What? Giggity <laughs> goo. Yeah, I see how this is going to go. It, it's just coffee, I promise. See? It's just sure. Coffee. This is just water. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, how you been, brother? Man, I've been good, bro. I've uh, been battling a sinus or flu or cold or something, but I've been doing good, man. I've been uh, a little overworked lately, but you know what? It's well worth it, man. It's well worth it. How about you guys? Struggling through Keep on keeping on. Yep, that's all you can do. But the but yeah. the good part is, every once yeah. in a while, we get to escape our little nest here and meet people like <laughs> Chris, who we met actually New Year's Eve. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Oh my God, I can't. Uh, man, just... Well, that's that's something I wanted to to bring up because not a lot of, you know, unfortunately, and tell me if you disagree with this, but. You can you can separate piece, people involved in the paranormal into two basic groups. One oh. is a group of researchers that are actually trying things. They're trying to figure out the how. They kind of already agree with the fact that something's there. You're right. at least collecting anomalous data from somewhere that you cannot explain. So yes, that's half. And those half are actually doing experiments, trying different things. The right. other half are still dealing with the fact that they're still collecting EVPs. They're, 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 they're still amazed by the fact that there's something there. They're not worried about the how. Right, exactly. Exactly. I agree with you. And I don't have, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures. My camera died on me when I went upstairs that night. But I would really like for you, if you could, take a few minutes to explain to our viewers um, the experiment that we did and how we had it set up because that was pretty interesting. That was a lot of humanity to be involved in one experiment, but it, you know, I haven't had a chance to review our data yet. I don't know if you've got anything else from that or from the hallway experiment with the lasers that, that New yeah, Year's Eve Yeah, actually, night. we did uh, capture some pretty good stuff. We captured quite a, not a lot, I'm going to say. I'm going to say we caught a couple different things. Um, there was a lot of stuff that we did hear that we could explain to either someone's stomach or someone swallowing. Or, I mean, because we had different voice recorders all the way down from 20 hertz recording all the way up to three four or five hundred hertz i mean we had different range of levels to record on and what we did we spread out these lasers not the regular grid lasers you see we take the tips off and shoot beams of lasers with fog and what we do we let the fog settle and we we had it running up there for a good hour before we all went up there the fog and everything and we let it settle and the reason why we do that and then we bring everybody in there and sit down, and once the fog is kind of calmed down, we kind of just observe and just kind of watch to see what happens. I mean, yeah, you're going to get some strange anomalies crossing the beams. You're going to see different fluctuations in the fog, and those are easy to explain. But once in a while, and it's happened only twice, and many times I've done this experiment, but once in a while you'll actually see something that's anomalous. It's unexplainable. And like you, you were all the way at the other end mm -hmm. of the hallway, and you was actually observing shadows breaking the beams. I do believe towards your end of the hallway. Yeah, and and like, like when I when I asked you to come down to see it, I wanted I just wanted you to verify that one I wasn't nuts because <laughs> right. that's that's come up in the past. It still right. does. But but I wanted you to see what I was seeing. Um with the shadow play now some of what some of what was down there you could you could associate with just you know night vision matrixing you know because when you get in that gray area between going between your rod and cones on your retina when you get in that gray area transitioning that's when right. things can get a little hard to to decipher visually right absolutely um but like i showed you when you were down there there's some things that were just you could understand if it was somebody's head popping out and going back in but there was stuff that was just barely, like what my hand's doing on the screen right now, there was stuff doing this. Right. You know, and as far as I know, there was nobody there with autism that would have been sitting in a doorway. Um, 
Well, so I mean, it, it was it's very it was just very difficult to explain what your eyes were seeing. Well, and with with the lasers, we had Alex sitting on the chair because she's pregnant with twins, yeah. but and she was almost eye level with one of the lasers, and there was a section probably a foot and a half, two foot long, to where you'd watch this little black thing that would go through it. And then it'd disappear, and it'd start again. Mm -hmm. But she was eye level with it, so, so that's all she could really see. Yeah, it, you know, it, it is interesting. It's not a proven uh, science, but it's an, it's an experiment, you know? And we right. try every different thing to try to break that, that boundary. Um, like, you, like you said earlier, brother, we know there's something there. What it is, we have no clue what is there, uh, but we are trying to figure out what is there so we can bring more data. And that's a great thing about Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. You know, Doug and Cindy opened their doors to so many wonderful people and like ourselves and everybody else to conduct experiments, try to help them resolve some of the answers that's going there and also help some of us researchers to develop more solid, solid data that we can actually bring forth to the community. And then working together with people just like yourself and everybody else, it's just, it's amazing. I mean, right. And like my brother Pat says, we were pretty much up for the whole three days we're there, except for Jake. He fell asleep during a laser experiment. God bless his heart. <laughs> good out of the gate. Just ain't much for stamina. Well, and the good, the, another good thing about the hospital is not only, I mean, are they, Doug and Cindy, excellent hosts, but winter, spring, summer, other than slight temperatures, everything is exactly the same. You can go in and run the same experiment once a month for 12 months in a row right it, it it's completely repeatable it's not every time you go back things are completely changed moved right. around and switched to where you can't do it again exactly and you know and i gotta say we're really excited about being there that time um I can't divulge too much of what we did or what happened there because now I mean, we have our own TV show now and, um, and God bless it. We were blessed with this opportunity so we can show the truth and show real locations of people that are actually for real and have real active locations and, and not people. There's some places out there that want to have an active location and don't have a solid proof behind it or documentation. But places like Old South Pittsburgh Hospital and quite a few others, we were honored and lucky to let, have Cindy and Doug let us film our third episode there. And the things that we captured there is going to blow you guys off. <laughs> you guys are going to be amazed. It's just, it, it, it's shocked Pat and I. Um, Rick, our, one of our newer crew members who came along for the first time, He's a big skeptic, but he's also a very open mind skeptic. I mean, he's very scientific, and he wants to get to the root, you know, tooth and nail of everything. And uh, he left there saying, "I got to go back. That place is amazing." And I, you know, and I don't call any place. I will never call a place haunted. I, I, I just because we don't know what's haunting it. And, and that's, and I, and I don't need to ramble on, but that place is definitely active, and it's active with so much stuff to learn. You, you just you be amazed and anybody who hasn't been there go there and really have respect for the location and do experiments do experiments and try to bring more solid proof of more collective data that we can all use well, sorry i rambled on that's okay no and like the hospital every time you go there they've cleaned out a new area we, we've got a new section we haven't been able to get into. Like they said, in six months, we'll finally be able to get on that, that ground floor in the lobby. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went in that, that section so bad I can taste it. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, and my one of my crew members, both, you know, Jake and Pat are here in the chat with everybody. Um, even Pat, he said it perfect. Excellent research facility. Absolutely. Excellent research facility, and you know that's that's that, that's something that's something a lot of people need to, to like like I said, there's two groups of, of research of, of people involved in the paranormal, mm -hmm. but there's there's also basically two different kinds of places. You know, yeah. there's a very 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 few places like South Pittsburgh, and there'll never be anything exactly like South Pittsburgh, mm -mm. but there are a few locations that are 
I'm not going to say dedicated to research, but they they don't they're not uh, manipulated a lot. So they do they do provide an excellent place for people to go because it's regional. Let's just be honest, it's regional. People that are close go there more often than people that have to drive 17 hours to get there. Well, and it's reasonable too because a lot of the bigger name places charge an absolute fortune That's... for minimal hours, and this place. They're, they're charging you hardly nothing for entire weekends. Right. And that, that was going to be my next point. And then you have the other half that is... Commercialized. You know, $500 yeah. an hour, and you have to have at least 300 people show up. And, I mean, come on. It's not it's not that big a deal. It's It's been overplayed. It's been redone. People have already right. posted all over the Internet that you have speakers and wires and stuff around. I mean, come on now. Right. You know? You know, and... You know, and, and I think what's good about Old South Pittsburgh Hospital is that Doug and Cindy have gone that extra mile, and it's wired for one good reason, wired with IR cameras so everybody yep. can witness what's going on, and microphones, these dynamic microphones that pick up a recorded audio constantly, and that's it. There's no hocus-pocus about this place. It's just, that's it. Yep. And I've I've come across a few places that've been about hocus pocus, and it's disheartening. It really is. Yeah. But, but yeah, I love it. yes, they're 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 incredible, and kudos to them. They there's there's just not enough people like them out there. Amen. And it looks like we just got joined in the chat room by Tommy Mr. Golden. Mr. Tommy Golden. Welcome, Tommy. Tommy Golden, one man, one desire. We miss you, Tommy. I have to ask you, Chris, why did you never do movie intro, man? <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. It's just, I just—I probably could pull it off pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, hey, hey, and hey, Tommy's Tommy's doing a movie. You could use—he might need some voiceover work. Why? Well, I have a, the lovely intro you you did at the hospital right before New Year's when you were trying to call Doug over the PA system. Oh yeah. <laughs> did, did anybody record that? I did. I got it on camcorder. <laughs> Nice, nice. That's awesome. And for yeah, for a small it. feed, it'll never get on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I don't care. No, but you know what? You know what? That's another thing. I just want to tell you guys. It was so awesome. I mean, I do meet everybody there. That was it was so kick ass. Yeah. Oh, I said a bad word. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, it was so kick ass. It was awesome. And the vibe in that whole place with everybody with you guys was just rocking, man. It was so awesome, and, and, and you felt good. There was no. I didn't feel no animosity. Mm -mm. Um, I really had a great time, and you know what? Pat and I and Jake, we all even got tattoos while we were there. You know, it was rocking awesome. So, And we all rang in a new year together. What a great place to ring yeah. in a new year, you know? Absolutely, except you have the one guy who never smiles. Which one? That? Which one? The one, the one with the blonde hair. Is that the same he, he walked around with the Does doctor's he wear Eli jacket. Manning's jerseys? No, he's no. not wearing the. You mean, you mean Rick on our team? Yes, I was giving him trouble. Mad dog Rick. <laughs> I was giving him a hard time because every time I saw him, he had this serious, dead serious look on his face, and I said, "Don't you ever smile?" And he looked at me and went, "Mm mm," and kept on going. <laughs> That's Mad Dog. Mad Dog Rick. He's awesome, man. Gotta love him. He uh, yeah, yeah. That's it, Jake. Roop roop. He uh, he. <laughs> He showed his true colors that weekend, and God, we love him, man. He is just, he is one of the, I say, he ta he capped off our crew right there, man. He was, he's a great asset for this crew, and I couldn't be happier with my crew right now. I mean, everybody's just amazing in this team. Oh, don't get me wrong. He is fun, and I mean, later on, he did walk by me and just kind of crack a smile and walk away real quick like I wasn't supposed to see it, but. Oh, it, he showed a smile. Yes, and I'm sure it hurt, but that's okay. We, <laughs> it was a research weekend. Just just so everybody, it's just so our, some of our other viewers will know, and the people that will, of course, the, course, the millions of people that will watch this in, uh, <laughs> in, in archive. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But... The, just so everybody will know, Chris, give us a little background on what got you started in the paranormal. Give us a little background on Tri-State Paranormal of Northern Kentucky. Um, spill it. Well, okay, you know Now you put I'll him just, on the no, spot. Here it is, here it is. I'm just going to let it roll. You know, I got into this field not for anybody to know who I am. I didn't give a crap less when it happened. Um, 
and throughout the years, I continued my research study through trials and errors, and I continued to press on to find certain things to find out answers why, what happened to my family. And I just want to say something to everybody that's listening right now. Ghost hunting, that's for fun. Research, it's real. The paranormal or supernatural, it's real. What it is, we don't know. But let me tell you what, it can kill you. It can hurt you. And what I seen and what I witnessed as a child happened to my sister and my whole family. And for us to move from two homes, because it followed us to two different homes and both of our houses burnt down, into physical attacks and almost killed my sister, that was a mission that I started from that time at a very young age, started reading, 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 that's a new word, From started reading, studying, taking everything I could in to, I was like a sponge, I was soaking everything in. And back then we had these big massive VH camcorders, mm -hmm. VHX mm -hmm. beta camcorders that are like studio quality size then, you know, whatever. And big old tape records, you had play, push play, record. Reel to reel. Reel to reel. You know, so that started my mission, and I continued it out. That's where it started in Southern California. And then years later, you know, I, I covered Northern California in a couple locations. Um, I went into some parts of Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona. And then I came out here, Northern Kentucky, in 2004. And I realized how rich of a history there is out here. So much history in this area. <coughs> And in Cincinnati, and bless you, whoever sneezed or coughed. Thank you. But um, Cincinnati, actually, in the Newport area, Newport, Kentucky, Cincinnati, was supposed to be the original Vegas, which was pushed out by the church and whatnot, and we all know where Vegas is now. But the, the Prohibition era in this area is amazing. Civil War, large, massive Civil War battles happened here. Shawnee Indian Territory in this area, it's just amazing. So I decided to get a group together, and then I... Um, I met up with a couple people and wasn't really happy with where they were going. They thought they were ghost hunters from sci-fi, and I'm like, no, you're guys that have a, a job and go to work every day, so quit being ghost hunters. So I started Tri-State Paranormal. And uh, from there on, it's been a mission. It's been an ongoing mission, and we've been blessed with quite a few opportunities. Um, I have always said, and I always stick to it, I'll never sell out. I'll never fake anything. I will actually pull... I'll call people out, and a lot of people don't like me for that. And you know, it's not because I'm trying to get to be a win an A card for Mr. Personality, Mr. Happy, and I got so many friends. I'm trying to prove to you, look, you got to do the right thing because if you don't, you're going to get hurt, and you're going to hurt somebody else. It's not for fame, glory, or fortune. Right. Granted, I was blessed for two being a guest on two different shows. And then we got blessed to have our own TV show. And we were blessed because we do it the right way. We show the proof. We prove for what we think is going on. I can't say right. really strong proof, but we show how it's broken down. And we'll call out the fakes. And I don't have a problem calling out the fakes when I have concrete evidence that it's fake. Right. Well, and you know, the people, the people that get mad shouldn't fake. I mean, per perfect example, and, I, and I've heard this said about Kim and myself. Because we don't put a lot of evidence out there. I played some of our evidence for you when you when we were at, at South Pittsburgh. I right. have anomalous data, because that's exactly what it is, True. that I can't explain. I know the situations it was recorded. I know the vari the people variables involved. Okay. Now I can I couldn't quote you the moon phase and the solar flares and all that other stuff, but solar flares are not gonna come across a voice recorder saying my name and another male team member's name. Right. Just can we throw that out there? Right. So, I mean, we've we've got data. I haven't made a big splash about it because we've always focused, our, especially our show, on the people. Like Much like yourself that are involved in the paranormal, we want people to see all the aspects of what's out there. Well, we want them to see that it's it's not just us. It's not just who's on TV. Right. There there are real people out here doing right. real work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And doing the and doing the right work, not the Oh, did you hear that? Oh my goodness. And and come up <laughs> 5 minutes later after they after they finished doing the research. That's not that's not how it's done. Um, you know, there's you know, I want to answer um, 
a question in the chat. Uh, any details on my favorite experiment or theories? I have a couple theories or hypothesis, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, one of my favorite questions that I, I like to ask people is, what's a ghost? And you know, I'll, I'll get a common answer. Well, it's, it's the leftover entity of a human being, you know, when he passed away and he's, he's not going to heaven or hell or he or she and they're stuck behind with unfinished business. Okay, I, I've heard that in movies and storybooks, but what's a ghost? And, and I'm not trying not to be so... Because I don't even know what a ghost is. No one does. I mean, I have theories, you know, maybe the subconscious mind is still stuck in going like a like a hard drive of a computer and uh, you know our body produces so con so much energy if you study up on anatomy you understand that you know our brain is firing off all these little electric little bolts shoving through the body making us do this so maybe when if you're driving down the street and someone's thinking about I can't wait to get home to see my wife and my kids we're gonna have a great time this weekend we're going to Disneyland and in that middle of that thought he gets hit and killed by a semi Maybe that subconscious and that energy of the body connects together in that still same thought and creates an entity. That's right. It's just a theory. No proof. It's just a theory. But then again, maybe we're dealing with something on a parallel universe. Maybe we're dealing with something with aliens. Who knows? No one knows. But as long as we continue to keep pushing forward and keep studying with these strange experiments, um, Jim in the chat room, he, I think that's Jim, Dr. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, it's Dr. Jim. Yeah, Jim. Actually, Jake has come up with a really awesome experiment. It's called the ES experiment. And um, it's where we actually leave the building and conduct an EVP experiment or audio session. Let me rephrase that audio session with this equipment hooked up inside the building. And we're outside talking on a walkie talkie. And the equipment is hooked up to the walkie talkie on the inside with this ES um, speaker and this um, other little mic hooked up back to it which actually you can't hear it when you're actually next to the microphone or whatever inside but it's plugged into a voice recorder and it can actually we're talking i think the theory is what jake told me is that what it does will take the voice from the walkie-talkie turn it into an emf field and see if we can actually record something onto the voice recorder nice and so we're out like i said and we have cameras placed up everywhere to watch to make sure we're outside and not someone sneaking in going, boo, boo, you know. So we're actually outside doing this. And I tell you what, it's not 100%, but I give it about a 75% effective because we caught a couple things. And it's really interesting. And now, is it radio waves floating through the air? Who knows? On the same frequency? Who knows? But that's another thing we got to study. And infrasound has a lot to do with, you know, what we deal with. So there's so much we need to learn. And like you even said, you know, solar flares. When we was at Old South Pittsburgh, we had a laptop in our um, equipment room. We was watching seismic energy and solar flare activity. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that when certain things happened, you know, and everybody knows one of them really good, you know, um, there were spikes with solar flare activity. Um, and there, the next day, Pat and I tried something during the day. Your solar flare spikes when something happens. Somewhat of a little bit closer connection of what we're dealing with, maybe, but it's a good direction to try new experiments. And, and I'm willing to listen to anybody who comes up with some awesome logic stuff, man, and just breaking it down. Because that's if we can all work together, man, we're going to rock this. And there's so much out there to learn. Well, and it's and the, the most important thing that I think is not happening in the paranormal right now as far as a field goes, people won't shut up. Every now and again, if you'll shut up and listen to what's going on around you, you might be surprised what you'll learn and the connections you can make. It's 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 the I've got to yell louder than you think that, that ruins us in my Absolutely. Opinion. I absolutely abs I got I, I can't agree with you so much more, man. I really can't. You know, I was taught by somebody after twenty eight years of being in this field, I was taught by somebody, which is just a little simple thing. And he said at a, an event, he says, it's not about how many cases you have. Why do you got to have some 50 million cases on your website? It's about the research and the experiments 
and the dedication you're doing and what you're providing for the community to help understand the field better. Well, and that was, I do believe, Christopher Booth who said that. Yeah. And, and it just stuck in my head. I'm like, you know, wh why do we gotta have listings of cases? To show that we're better than you? Well, and you know, and, and you can see that at gatherings too, though. It, um, like we saw it, we went to Hannah House for the first time this year, had an absolutely awesome time. People that run that Hannah House meet and greet are awesome. But I did notice one. I did notice one thing. It was like, it, it was a my my K two is bigger than your K two yeah. kind of thing because you would walk up to somebody's table, and you know, one people had their their DVR and four cameras, and the next people had their DVR that was a little bit bigger, and it had eight cameras. And then you walk to the next table, and you know they've got stuff on tripods, and I mean, it was like let's take everything out and knock the dust off, but. Well, Those of us that have been doing it a while this, didn't, weren't that impressed, or I wasn't. The, the really scary part about it was, was the one table. They had all their equipment out. They had the T-shirts, the banners, the flyers, the trifolds, the bumper stickers, the whole nine yards, and they were going on their first investigation that night. So, I mean, oh. but I will say that means Paranormal is helping the economy because we're keeping all the small business car printers, the banner people, and the T-shirt people <laughs> employed and working. By 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 the U.S. But they they had never been Amen. on an investigation, but they had all this wonderful equipment they needed to show off that day. And, and you know, passion. I, I trust me. I, I have a respect for somebody that has a lot of passion. But you yeah. also they they also have to understand that you know when you spend any amount of time around this field, and you spend time around the people involved in it, you learn very very quickly that. Once again, there's there's a separation. There's people that are serious about it, and there's people that are hobbyists. Right. There's just there's there's I, I, just I, no other way to say it, you know. I agree. Well, what, you know what? Tommy Golden just said a good point in the chat. He says, "Ask them how the DVR works." Well, it's like people will hook up a DVR and they'll you know go, "Where's the? Let's hit this camera up in a hot spot." Okay, why are you hitting it? Put in a hot. What's a hot spot? What, I mean, come on. <laughs> Uh, right. I got a hot uh, spot. Where's my lighter? I got a hot spot for you. You know what I use my DVR cameras for? And mainly, well, unless we're filming for an episode, what I use my cameras for? To keep an eye on my researchers and my investigators so I know we have something to back up when we actually capture something right. and are actually seen on the camera. That you can tell, oh, no, it wasn't them, or yeah, they actually didn't even make that sound. That's what a DVR is for. Yep. Not to capture... Anomaly. We'll have a camera in a closet for 20 hours. Hopefully something will pop out. With the silly question you asked, we were talking to the people who run Ohio State Reformatory. And right. they, they said that one of the questions, well, they got asked two really interesting questions that weekend. One was how many bricks the building had. And the second was, what part of it was it haunted? Say that again. She, 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 she said they asked what part of the reformatory was haunted. And she said, I really wanted to, with a straight face, look at them and say, the left side, the west side, but only on Tuesdays and Fridays. Right by the toilet. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, see, and the other question was, how many bricks? I mean, but that's really? The kind of, that's the kind of mentality that that we're dealing with and it, you know god bless these people <laughs> no and it's like i said you know passion I, I understand the passion and i understand that you're new and everybody has to start somewhere well i also understand wanting to know the history of the building but exactly how many bricks it took to build it i really don't see yeah. being of any importance well i mean unless, unless you're a bricklayer unless and you you're just a numerologist and if you're right. a numerologist then if you knew the exact number of bricks you could tell right away whether someplace was evil or not oh, yeah yeah you, you hear my you know i i think it's awesome that you got a lot of people that are jumping out there and trying to find something and you know and i hope to god most of them are for the right thing but you know in the past six seven years uh and I don't mean this in disrespect to anybody because I love anybody that's in this field one way or another. Well, most. Let me put it that way. Most. I take that back, sir. But um, I've been seeing a lot of people jumping on coattails, um, want to be a quick star. Um, it's not good. If you're, if you're lucky, it happens. I was lucky. That's all I can say. I was lucky. But you have to be 
in that lucky 2%. It's not like 98% of us have shows and, you know, SUVs. Yeah. My SUV's small. Mine's, mine's a pickup ooh, truck. Ooh, never mind. It's a bad idea. <laughs> it's, not, it's not how big your SUV is, Chris. It's what you can do with it. And as, long, and as long as it doesn't shatter in the cold. But you know that that is true. You know, and I and, and I didn't want to turn this into a into a let's 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 ran on folks thing. But I mean, it's just it's something that needs to be said. It's something that needs to be said and needs to be keep being said because there there's an entire group of us that are very serious. And Tommy will I, I, if he's still there in the chat room. I think he is. Tommy's there. Um, Tommy will agree with this. We had last year things were a little different for us financially. The economy hadn't kicked me in the nuts yet. Um, oh yeah, it was, man. But we did an invitational at, at the hospital at Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, and the reason why we did an invitational and not an open to the public event is I wasn't. We weren't trying. Kim, Kim and myself were not trying. Kim and I were not trying Thank to you. make a buck doing this. But the people that we invited were the people that at that time that we knew that like Tommy, Tim Rankhorn, Jim, um, Doctor Jim. There's a whole list of people that were invited to that, and they were invited because when they do go to an event or they do go where there's a large group of people, they're sheep herders. And, and I don't mean that in any disrespect, but that's exactly what they end up doing. You have people going, oh, I want to go with him, I want to go with him, I know him, I know that name. You know, or they're, wow, how does that work? Man. So, I mean, we, we wanted to have a weekend where those guys that were... And you can say that they're pair of celebrities. I mean, Tommy's done several appearances. Tim's done several appearances. Tim has his own show. I mean, you, there's a lot of there's a lot of labels you could put on these people. But we knew that they had been a while since they'd got a chance to go to a great location like South Pittsburgh, and actually do what you know they lights their do. fire. It, what got them started is they got to recharge their batteries with it a little bit. With longer. a group of people, but not having to deal right. with a group of people. Right. They didn't have to explain the people that were that when they started doing something and people came to observe or join in, they already knew what was going on. They didn't have to explain, well, I'm doing this, so this, this, and this will happen. They already knew that. Well, that that's like you, New Year's Eve. Everybody's like, well, Chris is upstairs. You guys want to go up there? It's like, no, he's doing his. We'll yeah. go this way. Let him do his experiment. Right. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah, not, it's not like... I was there when they saw the first great ghost in the hallway. <laughs> I mean, come on, You know, folks. Jake said something earlier, man. That's what's the good thing about our country, man. We have the chance to, you know, so people go out and go out for fun. You know, like people like to go ride roller coasters for fun. You know, and I don't mean to discredit anybody like that. If they want to go out and go out just for fun, go for it. Have a blast. But be yes. careful. Please be careful. Yes. Know your surroundings. And, Check um, the train train schedule before yeah. you cross the bridge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually lost some. Well, somebody died last year. Yes. In North Carolina. In North yep. Carolina. Yep. Trying to hunt a haunted trestle. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know, like I said, you know, I know I'm not I'm not an expert. I'll never claim to be an expert because we're there. I don't know any experts. The only para expert I know that I can honestly say is an expert is a paramedic. Right. That's it. Bing. But you know, it's just I I just do what I do and I try to help people and I and I'm still on that same mission I was when I was a kid when I actually watched my sister almost get killed by an entity, an unknown entity. I'm still on that same mission and I just got a great crew. I got Pat, I got Jake, and I got Rick. You know, and it's it's amazing. And um, thank God we you know, Pat's a great audio specialist. Jake, he's amazing when it comes to um, building equipment or designing new things. And uh, with the camera, I'm a photographer and a videographer. Rick, he's a, he researches equipment. And some of this equipment we'll get, we'll test it before we ever use it in the field and see if it's even worthy taken out in the field to use right. and what it's going to benefit. So I, I'm blessed. And now we're blessed with our own TV show on uh, it's called Roku. It's a box you buy either at Walmart or Best Buy, and I'm doing a plug. Is that okay? Yes. Plug away. Plug away. <laughs> Pretend I'm you're on the Titanic. It's, it's on Roku, um, and it's called the Paranormal Channel, Reality TV Channel, and uh, our show is The Search Existence Unknown, and we're real. We even dismiss all of our stuff. Our first episode, we dismiss so much of our own stuff 
that um, we took in three or four different voice recorders in on the same audio piece and one voice recorder sound like it was saying I'm here or something like that and then as you listen to all the other voice recorders you could tell it was just the floor creaking and it's amazing different voice recorders on different Hertz levels will make different sounds right yeah so we even shown how we dismissed our own stuff so I mean that's why I'm saying study understand equipment do testing on the equipment before you take it out in the field and you know understand the boundaries exactly Jim exactly so you know and that's that's something that's this that's that's the thing is is it's it's taking groups like yourself and you your guys there at tri-state paranormal it's taking groups like yourself to test equipment build equipment it, try things instead of waiting for somebody to come through the big flashy shiny box driving an suv and tell you hey this is how we did this. You know, a lot of people, why do they use thermal cameras? That's a good question. A lot, right. of, a lot of people think that that end of the frequency range is the totally absolute wrong end. So, I mean, there's, it, it's, you, you, have to, you have to put your hands on it or at least wrap your brain around it. Right. You know, me, me, if, like, if you don't know what it does, don't play with it. Einstein said if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it enough right and you know there's a new thing that we're going to start working on and i'm actually trying to figure this out where we can actually record on video air moving mass air moving like if you breathe you can see the the the, mm -hmm. the formation of your breath coming out of the mouth or if something moves across the room it has to do with heat and cold fluctuations in the air that we physically can't see but the camera can and you actually, you can experiment. Anybody can experiment with this at home. You can take a candle in front of a mirror with another backlit uh, paper or something like that, a flashlight, and you'll actually see that, you know, it's almost like, um, uh, what's that called when you look out in the desert? and um, Mirage. Mirage. It's almost that same effect. It's a mirage, but it's actually the air mass moving. And that mirage is actually... Uh, the mixture of cold and hot air connecting together and creating those crazy little, you know, pred predator looking images, you know, the right. waves. So you can actually do in a controlled way of doing that in a room and watch it through mirrors and different lighting techniques. And you can actually see the air mass moving in different heat temperatures and signatures. So still working on trying to develop that. But once it happens, I'd be so happy to share it with everybody man and see if we that's can awesome. all record something well you know and that's that's the thing like, like you'd mentioned you're, you you have a very personal motivation i and i've said this before i'll say it again my motivation for my involvement in what i do and what i try to do other than her um <laughs> i want to talk to my mother I, i'm an only child I was born an only child. I, I miss my mother. She passed away 15 years ago or so. I want to communicate with her. I miss her guidance. But a lot of people don't seem to understand that while we have very personal motivations, when we do it, not an if, when we do it, when we do and are able to establish communication, what? think of the implications of that that has to the planet. I don't want to get all esoteric, but great world leaders could you know call up abraham lincoln or gandhi or genghis khan or whoever they would need to talk to when there's problems they would be able to go to people or entities that have so much more experience than they do right and we would be able to solve problems then and there without bloodshed without people dying i would like to meet gandhi and just ask him why I love food, dude. Why? Why'd you do that? That's all I wanted to ask him. Why? I starve. Yep, exactly. Dr. Jen, he's got it. Schiller in photography. You got it, brother. Thank you. I was brain blocked on the name. Sorry about that. It's okay. It happens. Okay, you can get out of the corner. Okay, cool. Good. Thank you. But, I mean, you know, again, um, the uh, I would love. There's so many, and I, I respect what you want, man. You like to talk to your mom, and I think that's awesome. If we could actually.
figure a way to communicate with these entities, and hopefully it's the, the people that we're dealing with, and like Gandhi or Buddha or, or whoever, you know, it's just great leaders that had these brilliant minds that changed the course of our history. Right. Would love to sit down and talk to them. Right, well, you know, and then the old saying goes, if, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. Right, absolutely. We would just be able to take that to the next level. Well, and my my reason for getting into it is kind of stereotypical. Yeah. I just want to prove my mother wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, I saw, oh, yeah. I saw my first full body when I was eight years old. I described her perfectly. I knew exactly who she was. And I told my mom, I saw Margaret Duncan walking down to her house. She had passed away two weeks before. It was the lady who lived next door. And I got the stereotypical, you're dreaming, go back to bed. <laughs> well, you know what? You want me to call your mom up and say, hey, check it out. She knows what she's talking about. Well, you'll have to do that once we get the phone line to the other side. She's been gone 30 years. Still doesn't mean I don't want to prove her wrong. Well, I'll her foot. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> I still want to prove her wrong. I don't... Just because she's gone doesn't mean that she wins. But, you know, speaking along these lines, and, and you'd mentioned this before, that you're blessed with the team that you have now. Um, maybe maybe talk about that for a second, Chris, about how important, especially for, let's say, we do have a lot of, I, I don't want to say newbies, but a lot of newer investigators that do come and watch our show. Um, explain to them the importance of having a good group dynamic when you do go into one of these places. Cause like you said, you can go get involved in this and you can get yourself hurt. Well, for one, we watch out for each other. Um, we, it, it, the chemistry, man. And, and, you know, when we're at a location, uh, like Jake, he will read up on this, or Pat will read up on this, and we will study, and we'll actually observe and watch out for each other. And, and like, if we're in a bad area, you know, we'll keep an eye on each other's backs. And just, it's like a brotherhood that I've always wanted, and I have a great brotherhood with these folks with us four. I mean, there's only four of us in this team now and and um and I couldn't be happier. I don't need twelve people on a crew. I, I four, I'm good. And having we're watching each other's backs and the chemistry between us is amazing. Um, you, of course we, we fight like brothers or we make fun of each other or fart on each other or burp on each other but you know that's love we got a lot of love for each other you know it pat you know it. you know it. jake it, farts a lot it, so. it's a boy thing sorry jake i had to say that i love you brother but you know it, it jake he 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 does one part of the crew he handles you know he does the web designs and builds these amazing pieces of equipment for our cameras and he's a great camera person and like, and then Pat, he's amazing when it comes to audio. He'll tear things apart and rip it apart, and he'll do some research on backgrounds and, and new locations. And and then Rick, he'll study on equipment. You know, and it's it's so much easier when you got somebody to help you do that instead of yourself. It, 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 you can do it by yourself, but it's just it's it's easier when you got a tight knit group. And we got nothing to hide from each other. We love each other. We love each other like brothers. Speaking of by yourself, I've had several people hit me on Facebook chat or whatever talking about their groups or starting a group. And, yeah, the problem is most of them at some point in time will say, yeah, when no one else wants to go, I go by myself. That That's so dangerous because you can get in a place. What if you fall and break your leg or get cut and you're bleeding and you have no one there to back you up to help you? Or call the paramedics. I mean, or you get attacked by a dog and there's no one there to help you. you it's so or dangerous. A, a snake man. bite. I mean, anything. Well, I mean, going going during daylight hours, going to a cemetery by yourself, maybe not so dangerous. Going to an abandoned building, a, abandoned dilapidated well, that, that's building. That's what I'm saying. Most of them are talking about going into either vacant buildings or, you know, dilapidated buildings. Nobody would go with me, so I went by myself. And get permission before you go, folks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't want to get arrested for trespassing either. But to me, I, I can see absolutely no reason in going into a dilapidated building by yourself. 
the floor could give it any second. Halfway yeah, up the steps, you're, you're falling into the basement, breaking both legs. You're laying there for how many weeks? Well, Chris, you, you met me at, at Old South Pittsburgh. I'm a very svelte guy. I'm a very, just a teeny-weeny kind of guy. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Tiny. Tiny. Yeah. Just itty-bitty. I have to be very, very careful. Seriously, in structures, I have to be careful. Because if it's even slightly rotted, even slightly down, I'll go through. And it's not a matter. It's not a matter of well, maybe I will. No, I'll go through. I break break plastic chairs. So a, a ninety year old staircase, you know. Right. It's just it's people just need to, th- and like like we try to do here at PEN, we try to make people think. Like up on the top of the website, it's this is where we ask you to ponder this. That's why we just want people to think before they act or think before they speak. Heaven forbid that happen. Yeah, because trying to be the next superstar is not worth it's your not life. Gonna happen. Yeah, and it's not going to happen. It, it's not going to happen. Um, there, we was looking at, or I was looking at the Remington Arms factory up in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Oh. Come, come to find out that the floors are so bad, you need a guided tour to go through there, or else you will fall to your death. Yeah. And yeah, just decided, no, I'm good. I do not. I don't want none of my team to get cut. I don't want to get cut. I don't want no one to get hurt. Um, it's not worth it. We have to buy our own insurance policy to even step on the grounds because it's so bad. No. no, I'm good. That's like the McPike Mansion over in Alton, Illinois. Yeah. They'll let you take in cameras, but you have to have a guided tour. They have to take you up. You, only two people allowed. You put down your cameras, and then you get out, and then you just record yeah. all night. The only place you're allowed is on the outside grounds or the basement. Yep. Yeah, see, and it's not worth it, man. I mean, you know, and that's a lot of that's another thing. I just I want to say something real quick. I know it's coming towards the end here. No, nope, we run the network. We can go as long as we want to. <laughs> okay. Um, that um, a lot of people think if it's creepy and old and dilapidated, it's haunted. No. The house that almost killed my sister was a brand new home in a track, track home in southern sunny southern california so just because it's creepy and dilapidated doesn't mean it's haunted it has it's great for photography if you're a photographer because i love looking at old buildings like that and taking awesome pictures Mm -hmm. um but just because it's creepy and old it's not active and it's not haunted you know and that's a lot of things that hollywood has played into our minds that if it's creepy it's old and scary looking it's haunted Right, and what what they're not paying attention to is the brand new house on the corner could be more haunted simply because of the ground, the property itself, not necessarily the house. And if you believe everything Hollywood did, I got one word for you. Go watch Poltergeist. That wasn't an old dilapidated house that the family moved into. As a matter of fact, you know, it's kind of funny you say that. That's what our house kind of looked like in the movie Poltergeist. I, I I've lived in houses that had shag carpet, so I can't really talk about it. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that's what our house almost looked like. You know, you say that, and it's like, going, oh well, that's a trip. <laughs> Anywhere near Norwalk? No, it was Fon- uh, Fountain Valley, California. Ah, okay. Well, you know, and that's something else too. Is and 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 I don't, I don't know. I don't personally know your feelings about the metaphysical side of what we do. I, I will say this: I think it's going to take teamwork between a scientific side and a metaphysical side, simply because the metaphysical side has been around for. A lot thousands, longer? thousands of years of our civilization, there has right. got to be some credence to that. If it didn't make any sense or nobody could explain it, it would have died off thousands of years ago. Right, and Just, I respect that. Um, you know, the metaphysics of it all, it's, it's you know, some call it pseudoscience or whatnot. Um, it's, it's a good study and it's a good thing to learn. Um, I, you know, and I respect it. Nothing against you guys. I love you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just we don't go in that direction, but we don't discount it either. Well, you know what I what I was what I was going to say is 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 not only is it going to take teamwork between the metaphysical side and a scientific side, right? It, it's also going to take both sides being able to give to each other. It, it's going to take it's going to take people on the metaphysical side. They're going to go. They want to know why they know what they know. Right. There's going to take people on the scientific side that want to know how that person knows what they know. Um, perfect example, we had a round round table discussion last month with David Roundtree. He made some very... Roundtree's awesome. They, they, he made some very interesting statements. There's some research going on right now with parapsychology at, at different locations 
that's about that close to proving psyability. There's some very strong psychics out there right now that are very talented and very gifted and very connected, and they're fixed to be about that close to being able to prove that, yep, that's a scientific ability because the, this part of their hypothalamus is actually more sensitive and they can they exactly. sense this range, they sense exactly. this range of wavelengths, yada, yada, yada. But what's yep. going to happen, and, and as much as I hate to say this, is we're going to, because I know how the human race is, we're going to spend the next two or three years after that with people going, going and getting tested. They're going to say that they are actually psychic, and then they're going to go, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, I told you so. <laughs> well, and as, as you saw from, from the opening, our, our intro, I'm a dowser. Right. It, it's never, it's never evidence. My my thing is I use the dowsing rods to find locations to put voice recorders. And m about 80% of the time, I, I don't do it all the time. I didn't do it at the hospital. But I, I do tend to get EVP from the locations there. It, it's not something I do in front of clients, like in, in a residence. Right. Right. But... It's, it's something I, I do, and I do well. But statistically... I ain't gonna lie. I have my own pair of dowsing rods, too. They're just downstairs collecting dust. Um, statistically, though, I, I do want to throw this out there. Statistically, where she's told us to place equipment, we have yeah. had more luck collecting s static evidence where she said putting them as opposed to just a random location somewhere in the house. Right. Now, whether that speaks to power of intention... Yeah. You, you're just nine million things you could talk about. I'm just saying it's worked for us, and that's how we do it. Yeah, man, if it totally works for you, that's awesome. Right. I mean, there's certain things that work for other people and certain things that don't. And and I think that's cool. It works for you. That's just totally awesome. And, um, you know, like I said, I have my own pair of dowsing rods. I've had them. I experimented with them. And, yeah, I was shocked by them. I was blown away. And, you know, and dowsing rods have been around since the dawn of man. You know, they used to use it to find water underground and stuff like that so they can drink and stuff like that. And so, you know, they're an amazing piece of tool. And um, But that's do, all it is. It, it's not evidence. It's simply a tool. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Someone asked me one time, what's my favorite tool to use in the paranormal field? And I said, well, a library card. That's it. Eric's is a pencil. Pencil's good, too. I like this, and this is number two. Ooh, because you put two. these two together, and it's a force that can change the world. You know what? And it's a very good force. It's more solid data, evidence, yeah. um, than guessing. Yeah, see, that's something else that'll run off a lot of hobbyists when you start telling them that there's work. That you got to keep a notebook, and you got to keep track of details. And, and you and have to go through 900 day. hours of audio. Yeah. And <laughs> well, you know, it's funny... Uh, that's another thing we're going to explain with our show that we're going to tell people, look, most of the work is not holding a voice recorder and going, is anybody out there? It's, you know, can you come talk to me? That's, that's not the hard part. The hard part is the countless ungodly hours of studying the research, the property, taking um, soil samples if you have to understanding the ge geometrics and everything that has to do with the, the, the land of the, the building or location is at. And then, the, like you said, the paperwork, following up with all the paperwork and your notes, and then following up afterwards and going through everything with the data you collected earlier. Right. That's the, that's the hard work. The investigation part, that's that, easy. That's easy. That, that's the fun time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the easy part. It's the work at before and after. That's there's a lot of work, a lot of work. Yeah, and it doesn't all happen in an hour series. Yeah, and you're not gonna go through it in five minutes. No, no. <laughs> Poor, hey Pat, but uh, <laughs> you're working on Old South Pittsburgh, and you've been working on Old South Pittsburgh pretty much since we got back, right? And that was New Year's. Twenty-seven days ago. <laughs> Well, we was just finishing up, uh, I just finished up editing um, our second episode, well, the first half of it, Morrison Lodge, which is another amazing location down in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Um, and that took countless hours. And uh, we were going over that audio and video before that, just going over and over and over again and tearing it apart. And now he's just started on Old South Pittsburgh a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I know. It, it's not all it appears. <laughs> He's got about 25 more hours to go. Well, and, and like, 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 like you'll agree, you know, Pat... He, he's putting so much work and effort into it, he doesn't even care what he's wearing. <laughs> Whoa! There you go, down with the Giants again. <laughs> serious jersey. It's serious jersey. <laughs> yeah, seriously wrong. <laughs> well, sorry, well, Pat. I'm sorry, Pat, that was too easy, I'm sorry. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Well, Chris, if you could um, w let everybody know where they can, where you can be found. I did if misspell it on the found. graphic for every for everybody. It's not Roku TV. It's just R O K U. It should be no TV. Just can't pull that graphic up and change it real quick. Yeah, it's it's Roku. Uh, it's a box you can buy at Best Buy or Walmart or Target or Radio Shack. You plug it into your TV and your internet, and um, right there, our brother Jake put it in there. It's Paranormal Reality TV. That'll give you the link. It's right there in the, the chat. And the name of our TV show is The Search, Existence Unknown. And we're also looking for locations to, for next episodes. And another thing that we do with our TV show, we actually talk to you as the viewer during the show. Ask for your, your eyes to be our other eyes when we're actually doing an investigation. If you see something that we don't see, you can email us or Twitter us or whatever. And we're also looking for locations. And we will bring other teams onto our show because it's not just about us. It's about everybody and different talents they have and different locations and experiences. And we bring it together in each episode. So it's, we, I want to take the opportunity with this show. And when we got it, the opportunity was given to us, say, hey, why not bring people we know involved with this? Pick right. me, pick me. Right. That's you. And like, like I'm throwing out the graphic right now, they can also keep track of you at tspnorthernkentucky.com. Yeah, and actually Jake is working on, uh, he's actually updating our website, and man, he is doing such an amazing, phenomenal job. That is just, he, he's all, it's all, I, I love Jake, man. Jake, you do a great job, brother. I love you. What Good job, love? Jake. But yeah, actually, Barbara, that's the way it is, man. We, we want to bring other teams onto our TV show. We want to show your experiences. We want to show what you've, what you've done and what you've collected. And, you know, it's, it's not just about us. We were blessed to, be able to share it with you guys. And, right. You know, with great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do stuff with the public... Like you're saying, but when you do stuff with the public like this and you put yourself out there, you have to be able to hold yourself to that certain level of integrity. You know what I mean? That's the other yeah. big problem we got going on right now. There's just no integrity. Nobody cares. Right. Who, I mean, it's not like the, the, the ghost police are going to show up, you know, with a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> you, know? you know, you just kind of, this reminds me of something you said. Somebody goes... You're a ghost hunter. I go, really? I didn't. I don't go to Walmart every year and buy my ghost hunting license. Right. Not, and I'm that not, would be I, just a crappy bunch of wooden plaques on the wall because there'd be no head to stick out. You know what I mean? But if you <laughs> are interested, there is a team over in Australia who's been posting on my Facebook that they will give you a certification for yes. four hundred and fifty dollars. And it'll even have it, 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 it even has fancy little gold and stuff around it. Yes. So you can go on eBay and get it for twenty five bucks. Yeah, but this is from Australia, so so it's international. I can go buy gilded paper and make it myself, and it'll be damn near free. There you go. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and mean about as much. You know, that's another thing, man. You know, um, the people that have taken advantage of this field, it, it's sad, man. I, and I, what goes around comes around. You know, and I've been blasted for a lot of things that I say and do. And personally, I don't care. I have respect for everybody, and, and, and I hope the same back to me and my crew. We're just here to help, and we're trying to learn just like everybody else. It doesn't matter how long I've been in this field or anybody else. We're just learning, and we're trying to rock it. We're trying to enjoy it and have a good time and share experiences and share right. techniques and experiments, and that's what it's all about. It's not about me, me, me. It's all about us, us, us. Right. It's a community. Well, speaking of us, 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 again, do you want to send out prayers? Yeah. Absolutely. 
send some prayers out to Don, Shy, and her family. God bless you. Uh, may your wings spread wide in the heavens. Carl Lawson, have a good time up there in heaven, brother. Aaron Houdini and Sid Schultz, please send them healing thoughts, prayers, and wishes. We, we need these guys back on their feet. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen to that. Yeah. And this is a, it's, trust me, after what I went through last year, it's very humbling to have people help you that way. Yeah. Although, let me just throw this out to the universe. I get it already. I got yeah. it. Well, with Aaron, we got to get him on his feet. He's got a baby due in yeah. two months. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's a good daddy. So, Daddy, that's awesome. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Um, can you stick around for just a second? Yeah, uh, and thank you for having me on, man. I, oh, our it's pleasure. My, I'm honored. Thank you. Anytime. I'm thinking about once every two months, y'all need to come on do a TSP update. Heck yeah, we'll come on. We'll get Jake in here. We'll get Pat and Rick. We'll all come in here and just cause a whole bunch of havoc. But do I get to pick out the wardrobe? <laughs> oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw that out and say no. I'm just going to throw that out there. Everybody in Rams jerseys. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, guys. Well, let me let me, let me me go through our, our, our lineup real quick. Um, tomorrow night, Science Saturdays, I am going to be showing a lecture that talks about the... Hold on just a second. The power of suggestion, which... <laughs> which and this field actually means a lot when you start talking about people saying, well, what do you hear? Don't you hear this? Trust me, that, that makes a whole lot of sense when you start thinking about it. Um, haven't quite decided what we're going to do for Sunday Night Enlightenment yet, um, but we will have something up there, something very brightening and enlightening to end your week with. Okay. This is God talking. And then... <laughs> Monday night and Dad Gummit, I forgot to put a graphic up there because all I've got is is her commercial. And I don't want to play it, but Monday night we will have Everyday Impasse and CC the Huntress. It's Monday night's Ladies' Night, or as Jim calls it, Hotties Night. Yeah, it's Hotties Night. <laughs> Tuesday night, Paranormal Head Rush with Denise Gowan Kruger. Wednesday night is. Serial Killer Night. Yep, and this Wednesday night we will also be should have another video from Eddie Parks and them with Tri-State Shadow Chasers, not paranormal, but yes. Tri-State Shadow Chasers. <laughs> um, Thursday night. Right after that, we'll have the Serial Killer documentary, and then Thursday night. Thursday night, Johnny and Teresa with ghosts and stuff. And Friday then of course, next Friday here. night, Pima TV with our tentative guest Chris Conlon. Yep. From Contact, where those guys are coming back. Uh, we just played a little something for Bill. The whole gang from Contact is coming back, and they've got some killer stuff, man. Um, once again, thanks to Chris for being with us, and we got to check, guys. And Jake in the background. Go Giants. I do want the Giants to win. i got to throw that out there. Pat. That's all right. Sorry, Pat. Jake, go I'm Giants. changing your name to Pat. <laughs> well, if I can't see him, I don't know which one it is. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're, we're out of here, guys. You guys have a safe week. Peace. Bye, guys. This old house has a long history. It should be real, real good for activity. And we got the house wired for sound and got motion along setting all around. Got a box full of batteries ready to go. And everyone's itching to start this show. Got our logo tees driving black SUVs. And that one bald guy with a slick goatee. <laughs> Hey, round up the team, let's get started, hey, this is Brother Mike, well, there's a party and you're invited, we got the camera set, let's turn off these lights, cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight, hey, round up the team. Camera said, let's turn on these lights. It's all my rider friends that goes hunting tonight. 
That's right. Go get them, boys. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Pima TV. Welcome to Friday, January 27th, 2012. This month is pretty much done yeah, with. Yeah, it's flying by. It's, uh, the more mature I become, the faster they seem to move. Well, I don't know about mature, but yeah. Well, guys, have some really, really good news network-wise. Um, got some confirmation on some things today. Uh, and some confirmation the other day. And some confirmations the other day. Uh, coming very, very soon on Wednesday nights is the tentative date. Um, uh, on the alternate weeks that we're not showing Tri-State Paranormal. Uh, Shadow Chasers, excuse me. I almost let the cat out of the bag. On Wednesdays, when Tri-State Shadow Chasers is on, um, the alternate Wednesdays, we will now be having uh, Gary Manley and the guys from Nightfall Paranormal in Massachusetts will be on uh, broadcasting their stuff with us. So be sure to tune in on Wednesdays, and then on Wednesdays we'll always still have the serial killer stuff too. But the thing I'm most excited about, because I have a little bit of it my well, that way, yeah. myself. Way to go, Hammer Thor. Yeah, way to go, Hammer Thor. Um, did get confirmation tonight PEN will be broadcasting or recording or both from the Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival in Nashville. It is on April 6th, 7th, and 8th. The Nashville Convention Center downtown. Should be an absolute blast. It's uh, being put on by Ben and Stacey Dixon. Uh, be sure and check the website. If you Everybody to look on the website right now, right above the player in the chat room. It's a little button that says Festivals. Um, as soon as I get some artwork and stuff from Ben and Stacy, we will be having them listed there, and you can check it out and find out all the information about it there. And we were also asked to join pros yep. at the Hales Bar in Southern Tennessee in October for Ghost Hunts for Hunger. Yep. It's an all-weekend event to help so we'll f fill, fill the pantry of the Chattanooga Food Pantry. Yep. And we always talk about how important it is to give back in the paranormal community. Well, guys, I mean, it's been a really good week. For the most part. For the most part. But we do have some. We do have Hold some on. news. Mia, uh, we're gonna get this after I play this about who we got coming. Okay, play that first. Okay, just so you guys know, we got a special guest tonight, and here's a little something he put together. We we kind of like the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a bleeding ulcer, and from what I understand, they think there's some kind of bacteria, but he was having an internal bleeding, and they're trying to get that to stop. And Sid Schultz is in ICU. He had neck surgery and needed more, but they're not sure his heart will take it, so send prayers out to both of them, too, please. Amen on that one. And I have, I have to throw this in after what I went through last year. That's anytime you're in ICU, it's it's pretty serious. When you finally realize what's going on around you, when the happy stuff wears off, it's scary. So thoughts and prayers to everybody. And, and my little footnote, a lot of people in the paranormal community like to argue with each other. Just, uh -huh. just re not everybody. There are some of us that actually get along. Yeah, no, I agree. But just remember, you know, everybody has a family. This yeah. this list of people Chris and I just went through, they're still people. They're, they're still friends. They're still family. They still have loved ones. Absolutely, 100%. There, there's no point in the arguing. They may not be here tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. We never know when we're going to go. So never know that, when I'm going to be the next EVP. Right. Oh, I'm haunting some people. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. There's a whole generation of us that when we go, oh, Lord, they better look the hell out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's game of time. They, you they, got it, baby. They think there's a lot of teams out there now? Well, guess what? They think they're getting cussed out now? <laughs> Just wait. Giggity goo. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly goo? What? Giggity goo. <laughs> yeah, I see how this is going to go. It, it's just coffee, I promise. See? It's just sure. Coffee. This is just water. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, how you been, brother? Man, I've been good, bro. Uh, I've been battling a 
sinus or flu or cold or something, but I've been doing good, man. I've been uh, a little overworked lately, but you know what? It's well worth it, man. It's well worth it. How about you guys? like a man, the Lord that lamb just moved on that stand, I got movement in the cellars, I got footsteps in the hall, there's no time to waste, I better make some calls, I gotta get ready, make everything right, cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight, hey round up the team, let's get started, hey this is brother mine. There's a party and you're invited We got the camera set Let's turn off these lights Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight And if you couldn't tell from the video, our special guest tonight is Mr. Chris Maggard of Tri-State Paranormal of Northern Kentucky. That's why I almost screwed it up a minute ago. I almost did it. You almost did, but I was like, wait a minute, I didn't know I was doing that yet. <laughs> but we, we want to start the sh show off, um, we're, we're dedicating it to yeah. a handful of our paranormal friends, family, peoples. Um, it, it's been a rough week for the paranormal. Um, you you want to start, Chris? Yeah, um, uh, a really huge loss uh, to the community, a wonderful woman, um, wonderful mother. Uh, we lost Dawn Shy. Um, she's done a lot for a lot of people. Um, again, a great loss. Um, she lost her battle to cancer, and we didn't know. And then we just found out that last night uh, we lost Carl Lawson from Bobby Mackey's. Uh, so, you know, everybody, please, uh, if you could take a moment and uh, say a prayer to the families. Um, two great people. Two great people we lost. Definitely. And on the same lines, but not the same lines, we, we also have a couple of our friends in the hospital. Aaron Houdini is in the hospital. Um, 